Hey there, and thanks for joining me in part two of this tutorial series. In this video, we'll begin to manipulate our mesh, creating the shape of our key using polymodeling methods. I'll also go over the troubleshooting of your mesh and help with fitting the overall design into the Quake aesthetic. For this tutorial, you'll need to download the MDL import export plugin, which I'll show you how to do in this tutorial in the beginning. So without further ado, let's get started. So in Blender again, You'll want to go up to the top left and hit on Edit and Preferences. In Preferences, you can click on Add-ons, and then up in the top right, you'll see Install. If you've downloaded the IO uh, Mesh QF MDL zip from the website in the description, you can then click on this and hit Install Add-on, and that will add the Quake MDL export right here. So we're going to click here to make sure it's on. Actually, while we're here, back in the uh, Preferences menu, in Navigation, there is Depth under the uh, Perspective right here. And what this will do is, instead of rotating around a uh, single focus point, it'll rotate your view around whatever you've got your mouse on. Um, I personally enjoy this because this is the way it works in Trench Broom and many other software that I use. Um, but if you don't like this, you can just disable it. It's mostly a personal preference thing. All right, so let's get started with polymodeling. So in the last tutorial, I taught you how to switch from object mode to edit mode and what most of the functions did. Those are the three main ones, but we're gonna be showing you a few more in this tutorial. So make sure you're in edit mode up here. And now your interface will have changed. Up in the top left-hand corner, these small buttons will change your selection from faces to edges and vertices. So let's keep it on face selection for now by pressing three. And now we're going to try a few things that we did last tutorial, but on these faces. So select this top face for me and hit S to scale. As you can see, instead of scaling the whole model, it is just scaling this one face and all of the relations between it. Uh, this can this can also be done with all of the other all of the other faces, and it gets really weird really quickly. So let's go back to the original and let's try moving it up a bit. So let's zoom out first, and then there we go. Now if we scale that out have like a nice taper on it. And then maybe we can rotate this across or something. So I just want you to play with this normal cube for a bit and just get used to how it works. Pause the video and kind of feel around, maybe even switch from faces to edges and vertices and just kind of play around. So if we select this face and then we scale it, we're just scaling it on this axis and it's pretty, uh, pretty normal. But if you remember from last tutorial, we can constrain on an axis. So let's try X. As you can see, we're getting like a, like a more interesting shape here, as it might be uh, for a key. We've got like a broad edge where you've, um, you've got the, I forget what they're called, but the, the teeth of the key. Maybe they are called, te oh, are called teeth. <laughs> I should probably know this, probably have looked this up beforehand. So anyway. Once you're all used to scaling and manipulating and rotating the model, I'd like you to go back to the main uh, cube because we're going to actually add some mesh information to this model. So to do that, we're going to use something that will be most likely uh, familiar to trench broom users. We're going to extrude this up. So face select here and then hit E to extrude. And as you can see, it's extruded every single face out just like a brush in trench broom. And you can do this multiple times, get interesting shapes, and build out the beginning shape of a key. Right there. So there's another way to do this, which I think is more neat and results in more equal uh, size differences between the key, uh, between the teeth of the key. So we're going to extrude this, we're going to move this up with the G key. So G and Z. So this will be where the teeth sprout from. We're going to extrude a bit further and that will be the rest of the key. So now if we go down here, we're going to do something 
where we add something called an edge loop. If we alt click on this face here, or on this edge here with uh, with like a double click, we'll see that it's all around here. This is an edge loop. So we can add these to our models as we go. So if we hit control R, click, and don't do anything, just hit uh, right click. Down here is a little uh, context menu, and this will allow you to edit the attributes of this thing you've just added. So we increase the number of cuts, and as you can see, we've already got some nice geometry for maybe extruding out two teeth here. So I'm going to leave all of these other settings the same and just increase the number of cuts to two. So then we'll go back to the main view. We'll press three to enter face mode, and we'll just extrude these out. We'll select them both with a click and a shift click, and extrude. Now from here, there's a few things you can do. You can make it your own. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scale on the x-axis and kind of pull these in, and make them more narrow at the face. And then I'm going to take this top one and then move it with G on the y-axis. So the head. Uh, in Quake, a lot of keys have very large bodies or heads just to kind of it's, it's a very cartoony sort of proportion. Keep everything big and blocky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the kind of classic bulbous head you might see on the medieval key. So I'm going to extrude up. So selecting this top face, extruding up with E, scaling it out, and then pulling that up, extruding again, scaling again. And as we can see, that's already looking pretty much like one of the Quake keys. Um, I might have to scale this top uh, head by a bit, though. So let's let's uh, let's do this. This is a bit of good problem solving. So if we hit Alt Z or click this little icon up here, we'll see we're toggling X-ray, and this allows us to see our faces through the model. If we hit three, and then we box select, so we click and drag these top faces. We can now scale this headpiece and it will not affect the rest of the model. So going from what we uh, remember last time, I'm going to scale, but only on the X and Y axis, uh, the, yeah, the X and Y axes. So I'm going to pull that out a bit till it looks as big as I want it to. Then I'm going to move it on this axis. Now this top head here needs, a, needs to be a little bit taller, so I'll do that. Just select all of these with a box select in face selection mode. Pull them up. And maybe we'll extend this top one just a bit more. So we'll click on this little dot here, which selects this top face. And we'll do that. So this is looking pretty good already. It's um, quite basic, obviously, because it does not have a texture. But if you were to tweak this just a little bit and throw it in Quake with a texture, I don't think you would notice. Yeah. So maybe I want to, hmm, what do I want to do now? Let's see if I can add a spike to each of these faces out here. So this is going to be something called an inset. So if we hit I on the keyboard, while we're selecting a face we want to insert, we can pull it in. And by selecting both of these faces, I'm insetting them both. So let's click there. So both got two inset faces. It's X-ray to make it more obvious. And now, hmm, I want them to come in a little bit. So I'm scaling the relation between these two faces. So it'll pull them more towards the center if I scale them. I don't even have to do it by X. I can just do this, like that. And now, as you can see, they're a little bit indented. I think that looks pretty nice. So now I'm going to do some things like extrude. And now, what if I want to bring these to a point? There's a few ways you could do this, but the cleanest one is to go into vertex selection mode, select all of the vertexes you want to merge, and then hit M at center. There we go, there's a point. We'll do the same for the other side. 
the new point. Lovely. Now that we've got our key model, there may be some invisible problems that are very hard to spot in the model. The way this might happen is by extruding a face and then right-clicking to cancel it. In uh, any other software, this is not Blender, uh, this would probably cancel the effect, right? Because if you move something and then you right-click, it's cancelled. None of that move is made. However, the extrusion is two parts. So it extrudes this face out and then it moves it. Uh, your movement here and your right click will only delete the movement. So what it does, you can see if we scale this face, you can see that we're, you can see that we're practically insetting a new face into this model. And if we move it, it still exists, all of these faces. And that is a problem. So the way we could fix this is by going in in vertex mode, getting in close, activating uh, y frame mode, so we can select both of these vertexes behind each other. As you can see, one of them is stacked on top. And then select them and merge them at center. However, this can get a bit tedious. What I like to do instead is just periodically press A to select all of your model and then hit merge by distance. And if you've got this set to the lowest value, it should remove the vertex or merge them uh, depending on if they're exactly on top of each other geometry wise. And this helped me a lot when I was new and hopefully it does to you. So let's see that again. If I control Z that and by distance, you'll see down here it says oh, removed seven vertices, which is a very large number. Uh, so it's four up the top and then the three here that I didn't manually fix. Another problem you might run into is that you have a face inside of the model. Now, it's, it's always going to be difficult to see this kind of thing while you're making the model if you're new. So I'm just going to create a few. Now, the way you can tell that there is a face inside of your model is by, if you go up here and you hit back face culling, and then you can kind of zoom into the model and see it if you look you know, down and all this kind of crap, but that's messy. It's very, very messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Alt Z for see-through mode, three to see faces, and then just see if there's any little faces inside of the model. If you hit delete and then go, if you go delete face, it'll remove it from the model completely. And it'll try to keep the structural integrity of your model, uh, you know, sane without that, vert, uh, with that thing being in there. So if we do this, delete this edge, you'll see that it like, it deletes this face and that face to kind of make up for that. So another problem, I'll just make a problem for myself. You may not see it to begin with, but that is because it is uh, not visible by default. And I don't know why. If we go up here in the shading menu, and we click this little drop down, it'll open up viewport shading, and we can turn on back face culling. And what this does is it's a bit like skip in uh, in, in Quake. It'll show you, uh, it, 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 it'll uh, turn the faces inside out basically. So if you've got any inside out faces that would be exported into, uh, into Quake like this, it'll show them inside out so you can fix them. Now, how do we fix them? So if we select the offending face and then we hit Alt N, this can bring up the normals menu. Now there's not a lot to really understand here to begin with, but if we hit recalculate outside, it'll try and make sure that it's on the outside of the mesh. This can happen really easily. So let's just go through and just select these ones and let's turn them inside out. There we go. Um, if your entire model somehow got flipped uh, and it was doing this weird effect, you can just select the entire thing with A, Alt N to open up the normals menu and then flip. Thanks for watching this tutorial. In the next video, we'll try and make a more complex key using even more advanced poly modeling methods. And we will try and 
UV unwrap the model so we can project a texture onto it and finally get it looking like it should. I'll see you in the next one.